and welcome back to Burbeck's Bryn's Urban Exploration. Today we are back exploring the abandoned hospital which we looked at a few weeks ago. Recently a lot of photos of this hospital have shown up in like the Chinese social media, you know like on Chinese Urbex websites. People have come into this hospital and they've been looking around it. Recently a lot of photos of this place have been showing up you know in Chinese Urbex groups. And one of the photos that I saw in these groups actually kind of made my moral compass spin a little bit. As maybe an older urbexer, I'm actually 40 now, it was my 40th birthday last week. Some of the photos that were showing up from this hospital were of specimens. A lot of the time, urbexers, they dream of coming into hospitals and finding specimens. But recently, my attitude towards this has started to change a lot. You may remember that a couple of weeks ago I actually went back to the abandoned school that we visited where I'd found a skull and I actually took the skull and some other remains and we went out and buried it. This kind of opened a whole new can of worms. My brain started kind of processing this information and I've been reading a lot about these things recently. When I saw the photos online in the Chinese social media, I could see a lot of specimens of like organs, like hearts and brains and lungs. There was also a full-sized specimen skeleton. You may remember from the last video, I told you that a lot of these skeleton specimens and a lot of these organs are actually taken from people who have been executed. There is no culture of organ donation in this country. It's very unusual that people would donate their organs and mostly you actually have to buy organs. It's the same with blood actually. Um, when you go to the hospital, unless you've donated a lot of blood in the past, you actually have to pay for the blood. I'm here in an abandoned hospital and you know there's this full length skeleton and obviously I can't go out and bury a full length skeleton anywhere in Shanghai you know, people might dig it up and think it's a murder victim. I think the same goes for the organs as well. I mean, I think that all of these organs should have been disposed of properly, but for whatever reason, they weren't. However, there was one photograph which really got to me. It's really got under my skin. That was actually a photograph of a fetus. I've got to say that I find that as I get older, my attitude towards these things is starting to change. And that's where I need your help, all right? My moral compass is spinning all over the place right now, and I'm not really sure what to do. What's happened is that I found this fetus at this hospital, right? As soon as I saw this picture of the specimen fetus here, it kind of said, I'm sorry, I'm finding it really difficult to describe how I'm feeling about all this. It's tough for me to kind of process this information. I know that all of my viewers, whether you're in America, England, Singapore, India, China, wherever you are, everyone has different attitudes towards life, towards human beings. At the same time, I think there are a few standards which should always be applied, and one of those is respect towards human life. Now the fetus I'm about to show you, if you don't want to see it, please close your eyes, okay? I'm not joking. If you're squeamish about these things, please close your eyes. It says here that the fetus is about four to five months old. Something that's also quite disturbing in China is that abortion is very widespread in China. Because of this culture that came from the one-child policy, even now, women can find it very easy to get an abortion. There used to be an abortion ad when I lived in Changchun, and it used to say, which means, if it's not convenient, give us a call. And that's basically a call to get an abortion. Here in China, abortion is considered another form of contraception. Now, I don't want you to think that I take these things lightly. I really don't. This is, I've given a lot of serious thought to this. One of the questions that pops up when you start thinking about, and there's a question that keeps popping up in my mind, and 
the question is being asked by a lot of people is at what stage in the pregnancy does a fetus become human? At what time does it achieve human rights? At what time does it get a soul? And I actually had to do quite a lot of research about this one because it's not a topic that I often talk about. It's not something that I was familiar with. And what eventually came up is this idea of gradualism, right? Gradualism basically means that there's this scale and maybe people are at different levels on this scale depending upon their beliefs. So for example, some people believe that the fetus has a soul as soon as it's conceived. As soon as the sperm hits the egg, then that is a human life. At the same time, some people try to justify that maybe when the woman reaches the second trimester, you know, the third or fourth month, then at that stage, the child is considered human, that they have human rights, that they have a soul. And you can find people who believe in all of these different ideas, you know, right through from day zero, right through to the end of nine months when the baby finally comes out. And there are even some people that believe it doesn't even have a soul until after it's been born and it's been named. I'm not entirely sure where I fit on this scale, and that's something that I've been trying to figure out recently. This is a much deeper topic than I would usually talk about, but I just want to present you with the facts. You remember that actually last time when I buried the skull and the human remains that we found in the abandoned school, what I wanted to do was kind of send that soul off to the other world. I don't necessarily believe in these things, but I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of you believe in these things passionately, and I know a lot of you might not believe in these things at all, or some of you might not know how you feel about it. You might never thought about this question before. For me personally, it was important to bury those remains. It felt like the right thing to do. You know, as you get older, kind of your sense of morality increases, your sense of the right thing to do increases, despite what other people might say. I was talking with another urbexer recently and I mentioned this situation about the fetus and I had this kind of nagging feeling that it shouldn't be left here. And I mean, you can see it's just been left in this cabinet, right? This is it just here, it's tiny, right? This is what a four to five month old fetus looks like. I think it's a boy. And it's just been left here. I'm not exactly sure what I believe in about this. I'm not sure what I believe about souls. I strongly believe in women's right to choose, but at the same time, I think that even fetuses like this should be respected. And I think it's disgusting that this has been left here when it should be taken away and buried. I know a lot of you aren't gonna agree with this. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, the urbex code, which I think most of the time is bullshit anyway, the Urbex Code says that you should leave only footprints and take only photographs. But at the same time, when you come into a place and you find something that just makes all your moral alarm bells start ringing, then forget about the rules and do what you have to do. However, with that being said, I need your help with this. I need to get a sense of what you guys think about this. Should I leave this tiny human here as a specimen with all these other specimens, you know, like bones and organs, just like a piece of trash? Or should I take it with me, maybe open it up and find an appropriate place to bury it, even though a lot of you might not consider this to be a human soul? I'm sorry if I'm having trouble finding words today. This has left me a little bit stunned, a little bit emotional. I'm hoping that you guys, my viewers, can guide me through this. And I'd really appreciate it if you didn't leave negative comments about this, right? This is actually a pretty difficult thing for me to talk about. It's not something I talk about on a regular basis. Interestingly, another sensitive topic kind of popped up as I was looking around here. And I was looking through a Facebook group yesterday, literally just yesterday, and somebody asked, for example, 
if you lose a hand or a foot or an ear, when you go to heaven or when you go to the afterlife, will your body be complete? When I read that question, I thought it was kind of a ridiculous question. I just imagined that maybe if there is an afterlife, you would be complete in the afterlife, whether you'd uh, lost a body part or not. But actually, I think in some faiths, they believe that you're not complete. And often in you know, horror movies, we see that ghosts cannot move on until their body, until their remains are kind of put back together, are complete. And that didn't really bother me until I saw this. You can actually see that there's a rather large human foot. To take the fetus and open that up would be quite straightforward and it would decompose relatively quickly, I guess, if we buried it. But a human foot, I'm afraid I can't take with me. That would be very unusual if somebody dug that up. So basically, I'm asking you guys for help. This is like a plea for help. Please, let me know what you think. I want to kind of get this discussion going. If maybe we can talk about this clearly, it can help me really decide the right thing to do. Because right now, my head is spinning. I'm sorry if you're the kind of viewer that comes in to see me looking around places and having fun and having an adventure, but this is kind of a more serious video today and I really need your guys' help. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you all again in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay at home.